Hello, everybody. This is Krishna McKenzie sharing with you a road back to nature, a rediscovery of our nutritional heritage, a cultural redemption. This week, I want to share with you the work that I've been doing in the community garden projects in Oroville and in Pondicherry. So, firstly, talking about what's been happening happening in Oroville, the ongoing projects at Serenity are just blossoming and surrender. Creativity has been really amazing. They These guys are really on the next level up in their project because they're eating the food that they're growing. So they're on their third community dinner. And last Friday, I was invited by them all to partake of that that dinner. I actually it was on a Friday. So we did the we did the the, the work the normal Friday work shift that we do together. And at the end of the work shift, we harvested lots of spinaches, about eight spinaches we harvested from their garden. There was this uh, wild potalaka and the red, um, the wild ponangani, sorry, and the red ponangani and the potalaka, the chicken spinach, New Zealand spinach. There was this uh, Mayan tree spinach called the chaya and the drumstick spinach, and there was also sweet potato leaves and a couple of other little things. And it was brought to their kitchen. And Angela, who is um, Aurovillian, lives in, in Creativity Italian Lady, she made the most delicious pasta with these wild spinaches. It was nothing less than what you'd expect from a, a high-level organic Italian restaurant. It was absolutely delicious. And I think that that is the proof of the pudding when you're, you know, they fed about 16 people that evening. And when those people, not all of them engaged in this, um, these values that we're trying to promote, but that they, but they actually eating that food and they go, well, hang on, there's something special going on here. This is the, this is what will convert them, you know, make them sensitize them to the, the importance of this uh, local food movement. So that was a very special um, part of my week last week. And also the, another amazing um, thing was the, the starting of the Secretary of Oroville's uh, garden in Aditi, which is the Secretary's house opposite the Bharatnivas. Now, Srinivas and Murti, our long-term beloved you know, guardian of Oroville, um, now he's the under secretary and the act. I think he's uh, yeah under secretary and acting secretary at the moment, and his personal assistant Katikayan, they really brought a lot of energy to say, we want to value this land. It's lying unused, and we want to use it. So, they they were a little extreme. They brought a tractor in and they plowed the land, but. I mean, that's not really how I will go about things normally. But in this case, I could see exactly why they did it. The whole land was ready to be dug. And, uh, you know, they really put a, a solid foot forward. They bought the compost. And then we started to make beds. They started to collect the organic matter from everywhere around the campus, sticks and branches and these uh, palm um, stems, which are very sharp, and they integrated them into the trench, added a lot of leaves afterwards. They got a few uh, boys to come and help, some agricultural uh, bachelor students, I think, and a couple of old guys from, I think, Moratandi came and helped as well. And we got, uh, I think, must be like 10, 10 beds composted and mulched and ready to plant. Then I brought some ladies from Solitude and the main guy who works for me, Govindaraj, and we planted tapioca, we planted ladies' swinger, we planted cluster beans, amaranth and radish and wing beans and uh, bitter gourd, and we planted bananas, papayas, ramphal and um, drumstick spinach and corn and and a few other bits and pieces here and there and it's, it's a and some other beans i think we planted this already those radishes are you know an inch or, or two tall the cl- the amaranth is out the corn is out and it's so amazing to see 
what this intention yields, it yields something very real, which is food. And that food, whether it's been whether it will be eaten by the secretary because he is not uh, or he or she has not yet been appointed to live there, but whether it's eaten by the staff or the gardener, or maybe it's maybe they they create a. Uh, um, a food event. Who knows? Srinivasamurti is very uh, innovative. You know, maybe he'll create a food event at the foundation and and show everyone the value of what they've done by feeding people. What it is at the end of the day, it's a very profound statement by the government of India saying that we have this asset and it's not being used and we're using it. And this is what we can do with unused land vis-a-vis growing food, vis-a-vis growing our, you know, honoring our cultural nutritional heritage. So that really excites me. It excites me because of the, you know, the the implications of this intention from, from where it's coming on a governmental level. And then another really exciting uh, development has been... Um, working with this uh, project, which is, again, it's Oroville Pondicherry-related. It's uh, our dear Pashi Kapoor's daughter, Anjali. She, along with other friends in from uh, Ovid, which is an architectural firm in Pondi, who actually did the design for Kalpana. It's quite an innovative um, architectural company, lots of uh, ecological ideas integrated into their designs and these guys have started a a really like a people's movement in Pondi where they're trying to get the circle garden established in as many public spaces as they can in schools in hospitals in empty plots outside offices so about three weeks ago we started at Ovid and we did one big circle garden and it was a big success a lot of interest they re- they they roped in all their staff as as Srinivasamurti has done in the foundation. He's roped a lot of his staff in drivers and watchmen and all sorts of people. Um, so their staff was really into it. And last week we went back there and we did another another set of gardens and planted out with them, especially lots of weeds. You know, it sounds silly. It looks from the um, perspective of someone who is you know who is not who hasn't eaten that food who doesn't know the value of that food looks something like very naive very ungardeny sort of thing to do but we integrated the the brazilian joy weed the, the red wild amaranth we integrated this um this other um, wild amaranth, alt, I can't remember the Latin names Nina Nina keeps telling me them but they just go out of my head um and then we integrated ponangani and uh, various other chicken spinach and New Zealand spinach, various other other spinaches, and we replanted the garden that we did two weeks ago as well. So any gaps that were there, we we filled them up with more seeds. And I think the follow up in these projects is really important because you won't be guaranteed a success the first time round. So going back, checking what's worked, what hasn't, explaining to them, seeing with them, looking at it, discussing it and actually replanting, making sure we have 100 percent success is really, really important. And then from Ovid, after we finished that, we went to a place in... um, Vaitkupam, uh, I think it's called, there by the distillery. And there was uh, two big apartment blocks. And in between them, there was this little plot. And I walked into this plot. And the first thing I see is this wild purslane. Then I noticed the wild amaranth. Then I noticed manatakali. Then I noticed the wild passion fruit. And I noticed a few other weeds. And I showed these everyone. I said, look, eat them, taste them. Look, this is first and foremost, this is our value. And then what we did is we were quite a large group of people. We did a huge circle garden with uh, a cross in the middle. So the circle garden, as you must know by now, hopefully you, you guys will be able to teach this course on your own now. But the, you, dig a, you dig a trench of about 20 centimeters deep and the width of a mummity, the, the local spade, wide. And we fill it with organic matter. And then we also dig a cross. So we end up with four quadrants. And in the cross, again, you put all the organic matter on the top leaves, on the bottom, more things like sticks and thorns and, and larger coarse organic matter. 
And then we planted like crazy. We planted so many different plants from the sweet leaf and drumstick and hibiscus. Hibiscus went outside the circle. The sweet leaf went outside. Agati spinach outside. And then inside all these wild spinaches and sweet potato. And um, then we put in corn and ladies' fingers and... Um, cluster beans and amaranth and all sorts of beautiful plants um, went into the into the garden. I think they even had some brinjal that would that had come up on its own in that weird weed plot. So we dug that up and planted that in the garden as well. And something is happening. There is no doubt. So this week I finally got the beautiful photos that Alessandra Silva has done. She's an Aurovillian living in Shanti, just across from Matra Mandir. She's an exceptional photographer. Um, she comes to the, the, the session and it looks like she's just having a chat and a, and a you know, sort of a social, socializing. But actually then you come back and you see 20 photos and they're all such keen little observations she's made. And they really carry the spirit of these projects. So all these photos I uploaded this week, all under the heading of Oroville Community Garden Project. So there's one in Humanscapes, there's the Tibetan Pavilion album, Serenity album, there's the Creativity album, and the Surrender album. And there is the album of the Secretary's House there's the album of um, also Invocation. Invocation, I haven't told you about. Actually, I forgot to mention that to you. So Invocation is where Ayan lives. Ayan is uh, one young Aurovillian. He's a budding uh, farmer enthusiast. He's a, he's a bit of a genius as well. He, if you sit with him, he'll start telling you about the gases on Uranus. He's, a, he's an amazing kid. He's I think he must be 12 now. And... He has already started a little garden there, and along with some of his friends, who happen to be my daughter's friends as well, they they decided that they want to have their own project in Invocation. So these kids, with a little bit of, uh, you know, they want to have a kids-only garden, no adults. You know, adults come if you're asked. If you're requested help, you can come, but otherwise no need. So they requested some help, and I came, and we started the first beds, and then from then on, I gave them a bit of guidance from the distance, and I haven't really been there much. I've given them some seeds and some plants, and they've gone to Serenity, which is about a five-minute walk away with a wheelbarrow, and they've been given some compost from them. We brought them some extra tools, and they've, I think they have now one, two, three, four, about five little beds that they've done. And yesterday, I took some of them to the secretary's house to show them what the vision of a larger project may look like. And I could see that that was like sinking into their minds and they were sort of thinking like, what do they want their land eventually to look like? But it's really wonderful. They've, all, they've already got bananas up and papayas and some fruit trees and radish and corn and ladies' finger, the usual suspects. But again, it illustrates that there, there's something happening, you know, and especially in this time of lockdown where we really considering, well, our kids, their whole routine is broken, you know, nothing less than broken. And they have to rediscover, a, a, we have to rediscover a way for them to engage in activities that are meaningful and actually gives us an opportunity to be less rigid than our previous education system. So I see this project as not only about them them learning about permaculture and, and rotations and intercrops and mulching and irrigation, but I see especially they're learning how to work together. They're learning how to manage a project together, how to have a collective vision, how to manifest something together, how to get on, how to face problems together, how to face a disagreement and what to do about that. And I think that that's really, it's again, when you look deeper, again, with the creativity dinner that we had, it's the social implications of, of what this food represents, which are probably the most important, you know. The nutrition, of course, is, is implicit in that, the well-being of our bodies. But it's the, um, the, social, the social implications that 
there's a much more there's resonance there's empathy there's compassion there's understanding there's a joy in companionship in in co-creating something and i think that that's what this garden offers these kids as well as all the other you know it's the, it's the sort of like the ultimate fruit of uh, of permaculture so it's been a busy week for me and um on Wednesday I think we're going to do some nursery work at Serenity. We did a nursery a few weeks ago there and there are loads and loads of eggplant so I think we're going to start separating them and get them ready for the offer them to other community gardens which is a you know it's a really nice uh, aspect of this community garden project that people aren't only thinking about their own needs but they're actually creating resources for each other and that again it's again this social benefit this social repercussions to this project which are really really huge so thank you so much for joining me and um come to solitude for lunch if you can Come and come and see what we're cooking. It's amazing. The food is absolutely delicious. If you're interested in our basket service, this is also a a beautiful entry into rediscovering your relationship with mother nature and where your food comes from. And um you can come and and join in in some of these projects in Serenity and um and um creativity and come and see what everyone's doing. Find out when they're doing their their days and uh people are very happy to have some help look forward to speaking with you next week thank you very much mm-hmm.